As the U.S. draws closer to the presidential elections, Donald Trump is facing another storm of indictments. A Georgia prosecutor who is investigating Trump for allegedly over, trying to overturn, excuse me, the 2020 election loss in the state is expected to begin presenting her case before a grand jury early next week. In his response, former President Donald Trump has said that he will not take a plea deal if Trump is charged in Georgia. It would mark his fourth indictment uh, fourth indictment, excuse me, in less than five months and the second to arise from his alleged efforts to overturn Joe Biden's 2020 victory. So that's what's coming in when it comes to the twists and turns inside U.S. presidential politics. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget Donald Trump. This man on your screen is still the front runner for the Republican presidential cricket uh, ticket. Excuse me. Uh, I'm joined by Spencer Critchley, pro-democratic analyst, uh, who's joining us on the broadcast. Thank you, Spencer, for joining us on CNN News 18. Donald Trump going full steam ahead regardless of the legal storm surrounding him, do you see any shift happening in the Republican base when it comes to the Republican presidential ticket? Donald Trump still the number one contender and his opponents are miles behind him. Do you, do you see that changing in the few months to come? It's very hard to predict, of course, uh, what's going to happen next week, let alone a few months from now, because the future is such a complex, ever-evolving system. I always want to uh, provide that warning. But uh, no, not based on the trend so far, uh, as has been widely reported, Mr. Trump's support among the Republican base only gets stronger with uh, the deeper and deeper legal trouble he gets into. Uh, he, of course, points to that as some kind of justification for his behavior. But history also shows us across the ages that many terrible people have also been very popular. Um, so I would expect his support to only harden among his base if only because people who have fallen for a con artist, uh, you know, much research shows have an enormous difficulty accepting the fact that they have in fact been duped. Uh, but also, of course, a lot of this is more like a devotion to a medieval king than support for a democratic political candidate in a democratic system. Um, I don't think it's gonna help him get elected president though, because he's alienating <clears throat> a moderate and frankly, um, basically, uh, rational and moral people across the spectrum. Right, but Spencer, at the same time, when you look at Donald Trump's record as president, now he's not been a very successful Republican leader because you saw the midterm elections, you saw the, you know, when he ran for a second term, he lost to Joe Biden. You saw that how Arizona and Georgia turned blue when it comes to voting for Joe Biden. But at the same time, do you think the Republican Party till this day credits him with what he did with the Supreme Court, which kind of changed the edge of conservative politics in America? Is that to his credit when, you, when it comes to Republican politics? Certainly, but I also think that this has gone way beyond any kind of uh, rational set of policy objectives. There's an old saying, um, I believe it originates in China, although Winston Churchill was fond of saying it, that once you ride the tiger, if you mount a tiger, it's very hard to get off. And the Republican Party mounted the tiger of this irrational, uh, grievance-filled populism really decades ago in the 1960s. And they've been essentially trying to exploit angry, often irrational people in their base ever since. And unfortunately, that base... Uh, has run away from them and has essentially taken over the party. And I think the party now is just along for the ride uh, with its most passion and grievance fueled and irrational elements uh, who will not be satisfied by any particular set of policy prescriptions. I think this is a much, a much more uh, emotional, uh, ritualistic process they're engaged in that we've seen in other extreme, violent, populist movements of ethnic nationalism, where it's not about rationality, it's about some kind of uh, ill-defined rendezvous with destiny and writing a, a, a long list of perceived wrongs that are felt you know, deep inside people's hearts, souls, and guts, frankly, and have very little to do with political arguments. Right, but at the same time, uh, when we look at the Republican base and, uh, you know, Joe Biden is also, it's going to be a Trump versus Biden if you just go by the current numbers uh, right now. Uh, in your opinion, you look at the Republican moderates, you look at the voices and the, can you, you know, the cloud commanded by people like Mitt Romney, even, you know, Liz Cheney, if you look at, she's also a Republican centrist right now. 
when it comes to the moderate Republican base, do you think that given the MAGA movement within the Republican Party, that moderate base will end up voting for Joe Biden? Because even though he's a Democrat, he's not that averse to the Republican base. I think some of them will. I think many of them uh, who may be too uncomfortable voting for a Democrat uh, simply will not vote at all. Uh, or they'll vote for some third party or write-in candidate, because you can write in on the ballot any candidate you like. Uh, and that will have a very similar effect to leading to, I think, the likely defeat of Trump if he, as looks likely, emerges as the Republican candidate. You know, I'd also point out, um, just about everybody in politics thinks about politics, at least in the United States, as one spectrum from the far left to the far right with moderate uh, liberals and conservatives clustering around the middle. But in fact, we're talking about a spectrum here that's not even on that line. People who support Donald Trump have essentially rejected the modern world. They've rejected the idea of liberal democracy altogether. They're essentially uh, in favor of what amounts to ethnic nationalist authoritarianism, meaning they want a strongman leader who embodies a mystical spirit of the people, many of them feel, who has been anointed by God. And we see this upsurge of a kind of pre-modern revolt against the modern world and a, a desire to return to the pre-modern era of kings and priests and, and, and ultimately God determining everything. And that uh, is essentially what we see here. So you can be very far left or very far right on the spectrum of liberal democracy and have more in common, those two people have more in common with each other than anybody who supports a figure like Trump, uh, who, as I say, has is a, it represents a, an outright attack on liberal democracy and a rejection of the modern world. Right, but Spencer, how do you argue with the numbers? And at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's the main kind of like a factor at the end of the day in any democratic election. Thank you for yes, joining it's us. Yes, potentially, the... yeah, please potentially fatal flaw of democracy. Right. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Uh, you know, as per all the numbers, he'll get the Republican primary ticket, but will he be able to continue that offensive against Joe Biden? Is there that kind of fatigue inside the Democratic base? Will the, the MAGA base charge Trump to such a degree that even the moderates back him? We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Thank you for joining us and sharing your perspective when it comes to the twists and turns in U.S. presidential politics with Trump at the helm when it comes to the Republican base. He is most likely uh, willing, ready to get the Republican presidential ticket against Joe Biden. It's going to be a Biden versus Trump fight once again.